In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, vertical circles. Okay, so in the last video, we talked about things that were traveling horizontally. So if I were to spin a stopper on a string, um, the tension in the string would be what caused the um, the horizontal turning. Or if I was to sit on a um, like a roller or on a merry-go-round, uh, the friction would be what was causing the centripetal motion. Okay, so. If I just kind of look at it from the side here, so let's say I have a mirror going around like this, I have a, um, a frictional force that is, you know, like the center seeking force for whatever, like if I had a coin there or whatnot, and it's spinning around in a circle like this. Okay, so really the only forces that we're concerned with is what is making it turn. There are other forces occurring here when something's resting on a surface. You know, there's gravity and there is normal force, but none of those are in the direction of the motion or what is affecting uh, the motion or the accelerating. Okay, so we just ignore them. Vertical circles are a little bit different, right? So let's say I'm spinning a stopper on a string and uh, up here at the top, you know, here's my stopper. Now we have to think about, you know, what forces are acting on, you know, this stopper in this situation, okay? So yeah, I still have my string causing a force towards the center of the circle as it, as it travels, which is my force tension, okay? But I also have another force in play now because gravity is in line with my, um, with my turning, right? It is in the same plane as my forces that are making this turn, so it's also gravity that uh, is acting to turn the stopper, okay? Now, if I were to you know, swing it around to the bottom, okay, right, here's my stopper down here, well, now, force due to tension is still towards the center, because that's where my string is, okay? But gravity is now opposing, okay? So if I were to write a sum of all forces equation up here, I would have Fg plus Ft, is equal to mv squared over r, okay? These are the two things together that are causing the turning, okay? Down here, I would have ft minus fg equals mv squared over r, okay? Now, if I look at the difference, let's just think about the tension in the string, okay? Up here, the tension in the string is going to be a lot less because as I swing it around up here, gravity is sort of helping me out, creating enough force for it to, to turn, right? So gravity can, like, take it through its turn. Down here, uh, the tension has to, like, overcome this gravity in order to maintain the same velocity. So if my string was going to snap at any point, right, it would probably snap down here at the bottom where the tension would have to be the highest to sort of overcome this gravity, okay? So it's, it's something to think about when we have um, multiple forces acting here, okay? Now, another thing and another way that we might be asked questions is like, uh, what would be the velocity the stopper would be going if uh, at the very tip top of the string, or at, of the motion, that the string would just go slack, okay? So if the string went slack, then in that case, so a slack string, okay, we would have uh, just Fg equaling mv squared over r. It's almost like there was no force in the string um, at all, right? Um, Another way that we can think about this, so this is stopper on a string scenario. Let's look at a scenario like a roller coaster scenario. Okay, so a lot of roller coasters have these loops, right, like this. So as you're going around the circle, you know, let's say you're up here at the very top of the circle, okay, now you have a couple of things uh, causing you to turn, right? We have gravity going down in this direction, and that's causing you to turn. But what else causes you to turn is that the track, like, pushing on the tires, which is the normal force, right? So those are the two things that make you, make you turn. Now, at the bottom, 
okay? The, if I have my, the roller coaster down here at the bottom, now I have gravity acting in this direction just like the string, but the normal force acting in this direction or the push of the track on the tires. So again, we can look at the equation and have, well, Fg plus Fn is equal to mv squared over r. And down here, we would have Fn minus Fg is equal to mv squared over r. Now, uh, I just want to kind of mention and remind you what normal force is, or really how we feel about the normal force and how we experience it on Earth. Remember that the normal force is your own personal perception of your weight. Okay, it also is, you know, how hard you are pushing into a surface. Okay, so remember, if you, if you feel like your butt is pushing really hard into the seat, you feel heavy. Okay, if you feel like your butt is not touching the seat, then you feel weightless, right? So, you might be asked questions about, you know, at what uh, velocity does a roller coaster need to be going at the top of this loop in order for uh, you to feel weightless. If you felt weightless, then your sum of all forces equations would be this. Your normal force would actually be equivalent to zero because that is your um, perception of your weight. Okay. Now, what also that you could be asked is, what is the minimum velocity required for that person or for that um, roller coaster to stay on the track without falling? Okay. In that case, you would be uh, your normal force would also be zero. You'd still have this scenario, and you'd be trying to find the velocity where this was equivalent. If this velocity made this lower than your weight, then you'd fall off the track, right? You, it would make you drop from the bottom. Okay. Now, if we look down here, okay, you can see in this case, you are, as you go around the bottom of a roller coaster, right, your, your butt sort of pushes into the seat, right, because the normal force is having to overcome the gravity in the other direction. So down here, you actually feel heavier. Right? Up here, you would feel weightless or you'd feel, feel lighter. Okay? Now, that sort of brings us to the idea of g-forces. Okay? So I'm sure you've seen videos where, um, you know, people go in jet planes or whatever, celebrities will go um, uh, into like Air Force fighter planes and they do these big loops and everything. And really what is happening is that they are experiencing g-forces. And g-forces is really your normal force, what, how many g's of your weight. So how many multiples of your weight do you feel? Okay? So multiples of your weight. So let's say you uh, were experiencing two g's of force. That means you would feel twice your weight. You'd be going so fast around this loop that your mv squared over r would be equal to your fg and your normal force would be twice of your fg. Okay, so let's just look at that mathematically. If I had fn equal to mv squared over r plus fg. So if this was your weight plus this was another subset of your weight, then you would be experiencing two g's of force. If this was twice your fg and then you had your fg, you'd be experiencing three g's. Okay, and we'll do we'll do some you know sample problems with this. But what's important to remember is that you are uh, the relationship of the forces here that are causing you to turn in that scenario, and to sort of get an idea of the language and how that relates to the problem. Okay, so it's going to be really important to think about, and if you've never been on a roller coaster before, um, it might be harder for you to think about this, but to really think of how you would feel, like how your body would feel in that situation, and what it means in terms of the terminology of the problem. And, you know, we'll practice um, several different problems and do a lot of different problems where we're dealing with uh, vertical uh, components in class.